Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, interesting academic insight. I believe uh, it is definitely true that uh, NGOs today should not be just charitable organizations, but should be efficient, productive social businesses. Our next speaker for today is uh, Mr. Anuj Sharma, the Chief Operating Officer of Sarvajal. Mr. Sharma is an engineer and a rural management professional from Institute of Rural Management, Anand. During first six years of his work, Mr. Sharma worked with Pratham India. Two years back, he joined Piramal Water Private Limited, a social enterprise committed to making pure drinking water accessible to rural India under the brand name Sarvajal. And as of today, it is reaching out to 70,000 people across 120 plus locations in Rajasthan, Gujarat, UP and MP. As a part of his presentation, Mr. Sharma will be sharing his Sarvajal model with us. And I request the audience again to please write down the questions which we will take, around, take later on. Mr. Sharma. Hello again, and I see some seniors sitting there. Hi, Matai. So, and that's very personal. Now, uh, talking about models here, Lady rightly said, saying we are here to share our views, our own experience, mistakes, and the learnings. Now, before talking about surgical model, I would like to say that I couldn't have been given a better slot. Right after Mr. Dixit, having spoken about whether being Section 25A is the best thing, or even when you are for profit, rightly, there on the paper, when you are for profit, can you aspire to be a meaningful social enterprise? So here is, first I would like to share the story of Sarjal, then I might express some of the views because I may not be staying uh, post-lunch session. So let's just start with the Sarjal story first. As the name indicates, it's water for all. And as I don't know whether the list, the Outlook list has Piramal Group's name or not, right? But then let's just start the story. Piramals are big in pharmaceuticals. Now, they are very sincere about their visioning exercise. It takes place every five years. And the visioning exercise came out saying, we are here to reduce the burden of disease. Now, here is a question. 10th class plus students would know 70% of common ailments that we have to visit the doctors for are basically waterborne diseases. Now, coming out with a new molecule is more valuable to the society or actually providing safe drinking water? That's the question to be decided. And water at what price and at what ecological price, not only financially speaking. So what we are basically saying is that water has the best possible health impact. Let's go saying, what do we mean by that? We are basically saying, I mean, generally in development sector especially, we would come across people saying, oh, the beneficiaries have a difficult attitude. Oh, they are not aware about the technology. Or they don't really want to leave their current lifestyle and whatnot. But actually, our experience has been a little different. We are saying technology was there. RO, reverse osmosis, is a, you know, at least for 50 years, it's a well-known technology. And this has been around. It has its merits and demerits. But what I'm trying to say here is, Technology was well known. Attitudes were not a problem. People knew it. Yes, we were warned saying selling water would be a cultural taboo. And it will bring a bad name to the group. And we said, OK, let's try it out. Now, what my take on saying if Sarjal is to be considered a success, and we'll come to the financials also saying where we are reaching, whether this is a comparable case to something called WAC, the people who are generally, you know, uh, well-versed with the financials and financial terminology would know saying any group when, while investing would say, okay, at least this much decent amount of investment rate, I mean, the interest rate I should be earning back. So when we look at it, we'll come to know saying what kind of patience, as Mrs. Oja said, would be required. Surgical theory of change is very simple. Avoid subsidies to drive cost leadership. Now, I mean, I would say at least 50% of the people sitting in this room already know a small domestic level RO units, right? Water industry has been thriving on selling machines for the last 50 years. And mind you, when we started this business, a 500 liter per hour machine was being sold. In fact, somebody sold it to us, five machines, at five lakh each. And today, we have brought it down to 1.5 lakh. If you are getting charity money, if you are getting grants, you don't really care about cost leadership. That's one point that I think we can add to what Mr. Dixit said. Aligning incentives with the goals. Yes, various state governments have taken initiatives, and there are programs where they are saying, okay, plant RO units, and 
appoint an operator and the panchayat will be responsible for electricity and other recurring costs and you have a solution there. But the problem is the companies that are going for tenders and there's lots of underbidding happening there, that's one problem. Then there's problems and people are being incentivized for planting the machines, not for maintaining them, not for running them regularly, not for making sure that every household is covered under the safe water network. Now that's again a story of aligning the incentives better. Reducing cost of distributed operation, we have heard since Effie Schumacher's famous is small is beautiful, we have heard spoke and hub model and whatnot about distributed management. But to be honest, since the advent of ICT and uh, I would say improvement in the roads and the uh, what you would call transportation facility, that only has made it possible. If I were to imagine a surgical 10 years back, believe me, I'm saying here on record, it would have not been possible. We are hugely dependent upon ICT, especially on SMSs. We'll see how. Find a way to collect money, obviously. I mean, it has to be self-sustainable, not only in token sense, like, I mean, getting some 10% or something. Yes, there are ways of subsidizing even that. But we are saying, if there is a value that you are giving out to the society, then society should be willing to honor that value, which is what you mean by saying that people are paying for what you're doing. And make equipment financiable, yes. There could be ways of doing it. So you are saying, how can you do it everywhere? Can you really do it as a company everywhere? Or you need to find out a way to leverage it and make it reach everywhere. And if you are aware of utility businesses, utility businesses make profits only if they stop growing. What I'm trying to say here is that their cost is start ticking from the day one, wherein their revenue would take time. The patients involved is what starts playing out. So there are creative ways of how you get those upfront costs financed. So Sarvajal answer was rural franchising. And this is one point I would again like to add to what Mr. Dixit said, saying there are businesses, there are solutions that are needed. The other thing that is needed is, is scaling them. And franchising, I mean, if you were to read some, there's, so there are three points about franchising I would like to say here. There's very limited literature on franchising. Even Harvard Business School has only one book on franchising, okay? Now, the second thing is franchising has a direct correlation with the state of economy of any country. The higher the development, the greater the probability or greater the ease of franchising, right? And the third thing is in rural India, knowing that how difficult it is to enforce the contract law, you can imagine how difficult it is to do franchising. And we would call ourselves a pioneer of rural franchising here in India three years back. But now there are many people who are doing rural franchising. Technology for monitoring and collection. And that's where I was saying, if I were to imagine a surgical 10 years back, I would have not said saying it would be a success. Because right now, we are relying very heavily upon SMSs and even on GPRSs now. And off-grid cloud-connected dispensing, cloud-connecting, I mean, it's a very recent uh, terminology in ICT field. I mean, people who are associated with technology companies or otherwise have worked in those spaces, they would know much. But I would say my elder brother, who again happens to be an engineer, would not know because he is a hardware engineer. Right now, he doesn't care about what computer people are doing. So the point I'm making here is when you are trying to innovate, you may think saying all the fancy new technologies are actually about niche markets and earning bigger margins there, but maybe those things can actually help you reach out to the poor. So franchising, oh, who are our franchisees or what it takes? And sorry, I mean, I forgot to edit this slide and this was from a presentation made to a group of French, del I mean, French delegation. So this is all terminology in US dollars, but I guess everyone can do the easy mathematics. So when I'm saying what is franchising doing? So we are saying franchisee, hello, become our franchisee by giving us 50,000 rupees, I mean, to be, Precise, it's 45,000 rupees with 10% tax and whatnot. 40% of revenue share would be taken by us. Earn $300, which is like 13,500 rupees monthly as a franchisee, earn as your income, regular income, if you are serving 150 households daily. This assumes 20 liters a day being consumed by a family of four. Uh, operates machine, sells water. That's what the franchisee does. So what do we do? So we say, okay, here is a business model. You take our machine, you have already signed up, machine is for free, machine is always owned by me. Don't worry about it. 
but we'll give you training how to operate it. We'll maintain it for you. We'll come and help you do the community awareness, saying what are the water-related health hazards, what are the health, water-related health risks, right? And that's what you would call creating market for him there. Make ancillary goods available, bottle, etc. Give the local and regional marketing support. All of that we can go through quickly. This is one of our franchisee on the borders of uh, Rajasthan and Haryana. Now, incentivize to bring better health. What are we saying? So all the while when I was keeping my ideas on hold about saying, where are the competing models? Like somebody asked Mrs. Oja saying, there are existing structures, right? There are existing players who are doing it. And we are saying that even some of the state governments have started doing it, right? So when they are doing it, uh, they are saying, Panchayat owns it. We have financed it. Let Panchayat appoint someone to do it daily. And what is missing? Why is that person doing it daily? Why is that person caring about whether 50 people are taking it or 500 people are taking it? There's no incentive for him. Knowing the reality, the political reality on the ground in villages, we also know a particular jal couldn't end up become, and I'm just you know, using these names because I'm in Gujarat, I could be using different names if I were in Rajasthan. A sarv jal could become a patel jal or it could become some other community jal. You can understand what I mean, right? If it is only the panchayat hold. Yes, you can say, no, in theory, someone can raise saying, you can't really deprive me of this. But where is the incentive? Where is the incentive for the person who is actually running it? There's no incentive. Where in our case, there's a franchisee. He has the incentive. He's going to earn more money. Every time he signs up a new household, he earns more money. Every time he saves somebody from water-related health hazard, he makes more money. Paying for water, not for machinery. As I <clears throat> earlier talked about, saying machine is owned by the company, machine is financed by the company, they have nothing to do with that, they don't have to pay out. So their upfront cost of a starting business has been brought down to 50,000 plus some basic delivery vehicle, I mean, wherever they want to use that, and the carboys, and in some of the cases, even the carboys, those 20 liter bubble tops, they get financed by the consumer, saying we will charge you a, um, a startup fee of 100 rupees, so you are registered, and now we'll be providing you water for what? So everybody, I guess, is already guessing. What is the price of water? It's 30 paisa per liter. All of us are drinking packaged water here, not against a particular brand, but I'm saying 10 rupees, 12 rupees, 15 rupees a liter versus 30 paisa a liter. And that too, I am saying, I take away 40% of that, right? And I'm trying to finance my machinery, my technology innovation, and my team through that 12 paisa a liter. Okay. Distributed operations are expensive, yes, all of us know it, and that's why I was saying it couldn't have been possible if it were, I mean, we were asked to do it 10 years back. Contracts virtually impossible to enforce. That's what I meant saying rural franchising in India is really very difficult. I mean, a side joke in our company is saying if I were to start another business, it could be rural recovery. When a franchisee fails to deliver on his promise and you see saying this unit is not going to make anything and you need to appoint another guy in this area. Now how do you make sure that your machine comes back intact, right? You have to keep him happy not to harm the machine. And you still have to make sure saying through the societal pressures or whatever else, you have to make sure saying your com machine comes back because that's the capital you're putting out there. And that's risky. And I think one of the things when Mr. Dixit was talking saying, instead of taking a bank loan, ask somebody to put in money, it's not only as easy as saying that I won't be paying interest. It's also saying that if I fail, you fail. So it's a sharing of risk also. So you better bring that as an investor instead of taking a loan. Sorry. Now, difficult to collect money from franchisee? Yes, it was. Now, why do I say it was, and why do I again go back to GSM theory? Now, we are a prepaid machine. So, our machines, basically our franchisees are buying liters of water balance on machines, saying, OK, 